So the same thing always happens when a new device launches. The media gets review units ahead of the official launch and we get to use them while we write our review. Then the press embargo lifts, every outlet posts their reviews and videos at the same time, writers and commenters go back and forth, and it's a huge frenzy of opinion and buzz for about a day. And then it all goes away. Sure, there's some follow-up coverage, but after that initial blast, almost no one revisits the device to see how well it's aged. Because we're all on to the next big thing already. So let's do something about it. Let's take a second pass at the smartphone that took Android to the next level of consumer friendliness. I'm Michael Fisher with Pocket Now. This is the Moto X, and this is episode 29 of After the Buzz. It's the first smartphone from the new Motorola, the device that told the spec sheet to take a back seat. And to some, it's living proof that Android has finally grown up. It's been over five months since the Moto X came onto the scene, nearly a half year since the disappointing initial sales that may have prompted the price cuts we saw earlier this month. Is the Moto X still worth buying, given that rocky start? The answer starts under the hood. Anyone could be forgiven for doubting the staying power of a device specifically built to avoid the spec war. For many, a smartphone is a one to two year investment, and the Moto X's custom innards aren't as powerful on paper as those on the rival Nexus 5, which can be had for $50 cheaper unlocked. So why is the Moto X even in the conversation? In short, because of the software features that the phone's unique hardware enables. The Moto X got Android KitKat very quickly, as you might expect, and on the whole, it's still just as snappy as the day we unboxed it. It runs games just as well, too. More importantly, you probably remember the touchless control, active display, and Moto Assist features from our initial review, features which have mainly grown more useful over time. That's especially true of Moto Assist, which recently got an update that allows you not just to hear inbound texts when the phone detects you're driving, but also to dictate replies to it, all of it hands-free. It's not a perfect score, you still can't change the cumbersome OK Google Now key phrase for touchless control. Google's new Hangouts app bogs down somewhat if you're using it for SMS. And it's annoying when Moto Assist thinks you're driving even though you're on a bus or a train where it reads your texts out loud for everyone to hear. But those shortcomings are easy to forgive once you get used to the comfortable convenience Motorola's special features provide. These, plus little touches like seasonal boot animations and the occasional surprise augmented reality game landing on your home screen out of nowhere, make using the Moto X special. It might sound cloying, but picking up the Moto X after some time away really does feel like coming home. It's very nice. That sense is helped along by the phone's build. After five months, the X's pebble-like construction, with its addictive dimple and soft-touch finish, is a welcome reprieve from the competition's relentless pursuit of bigger, badder designs. And of course, the customization makes it feel even more your own, especially now that the wood options have landed. Just be sure to choose carefully when dealing with Motomaker. I chose a white faceplate, and I've never quite warmed up to it. Use that exchange period to your advantage. You'll also want to be careful not to drop the X. It can handle shower spray or the occasional rainstorm just fine, thanks to Motorola's special nano coating within. But if you're a dropper, you might want a case, even though it will bulk up the phone. Taylor Martin will have more in-depth analysis in a forthcoming durability report, but one chest height drop onto a sidewalk rendered my device scratched pretty badly. Finally, there's that display. If you don't like AMOLED and or you think 720p isn't a high enough resolution, you still won't like this panel. If you don't care about that though, and you value bright, brilliant colors instead, you'll still love it. And the 4.7 inch screen crammed into a chassis this small will still make you feel like you're getting away with something. Wrapping things up with the day to day, well, nobody's perfect. And the Moto X's mediocrity still lies in its camera. The wrist flick activation gesture is awesome. It should be standard on all smartphones. It's so convenient. But the output from the camera, even after a software update, is still pretty blah. Colors just don't pop the way they should, and pictures have a fuzzier quality overall. Low light is just, well, we don't need to go on. 
Now, it's certainly not impossible to capture a good shot. I've snapped a few shots I'm actually pretty proud of in the right light and under the proper circumstances. But overall, this is a camera for Instagram and Facebook, and not much else. Countering that is voice and radio performance and battery life. We still haven't found a phone that sounds as good or does as good a job with noise cancellation as the Moto X. And that's true of its reception as well, according to a recent report from Fierce Wireless Tech, which gave the Moto X, quote, top honors by a country mile, unquote, when compared against rival devices from Samsung, HTC, and LG. And its battery life, while not astronomical, is still more than reasonable given the phone's size. So after half a year, can we still recommend the Moto X to those looking for a great all-around Android experience? Absolutely. Motorola's attention to detail, its emphasis on customization, and its focus on intuitive features over top-shelf specifications has produced a really nice package here. If you want a more powerful Android, get the Nexus 5. If you want something cheaper, get the Moto G. If you want a great camera, get anything else. But if you want something special, get the Moto X. I doubt you'll be disappointed. And as I said, folks, Taylor Martin is completing his durability report on the Moto X as we speak. Be sure and check that out as soon as it goes up. And of course, you can see our original review of the Moto X here on YouTube and at pocketnow.com. Before you go anywhere, though, please drop us a like if you enjoyed the video. Share it with friends if you feel so inclined. Drop us a comment down below if you have some feedback. And follow us on social media so you don't miss more from Pocket Now. Until next time, this has been Michael Fisher. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you soon.